Welcome back one and all to Football Therapy with me your host Jan and welcome back to another news daily video where I give you guys the update of all transfer news from around the media. That's right, I'm here to consolidate all the headlines, give you my take on it and basically present it to you. Present it to you. Just give you all the good gear, basically. A few recurring stories of a little bit of a developed timeline and also some positivity. And also, I want to talk about money. We're going to be going over how Chelsea apparently do want Nathan Ake and they're going to go for it. How both Timo Werner and Jadon Sancho look highly unlikely in January for a multitude of reasons. Like I said, we're going to be talking cash, Chelsea's cash. The likelihood of the purchase of Wilfried Zaha and how really that would probably upset a lot of Chelsea fans. And the return of big Ruben Loftus-Cheek which is a really good thing but first if you haven't done so remember to subscribe to Football Therapy if you're new to the channel click subscribe bell notifications icon like the video to help me out let's get into it oh yeah if you like FIFA and Football Manager and all that luck make sure you do click the link in the top of the description to come watch me play football video games it's real fun Right, so Nathan Ake, the Express is reporting that Chelsea are pretty much confirming, or someone's confirmed somewhere in the ether, that Chelsea are going to activate the soon-to-expire buyback clause of young defender Nathan Ake. Apparently, both Manchester City and Jose Mourinho's Tottenham Hotspur both want the young Dutchman. They would have to pay more than £40 million to get in, but Chelsea obviously have that buyback clause where they can force the sale at a good price. It does look like it's highly likely it's going to happen, and the publication is also reporting that the player, Nathan Ake, would be very interested in the move as well because of the way things are going at Chelsea at the moment. Obviously, this is something I've spoken a lot on, how I feel maybe he's not in the mould of the centre-back Chelsea need, Although Nathan Ake is a very good, versatile player, who knows, maybe Frank Lampard has plans to put him back in the left-back position uh, as cover there or a player that can switch. If you've got him in your starting eleven, you could quite comfortably go, you know, have him as a centre-back, left-back, and you could also switch to the formation and have him as a left wing-back. He's a very versatile player, he's a good ball-playing defender, he's got leadership qualities, even though he's probably not that leader Chelsea are looking for probably because he's still quite young. Regardless to what you think about this transfer, it's not bad business. No one will criticize Chelsea for buying a good defender for 40 million who's Premier League proven in Nathan Ake. Sure, it might be not be the number one target, but really it kind of makes sense in many ways. So I personally have no problem with it. So Chelsea can make transfers. Chelsea have money, but how much money? Well, I looked into this a little bit and I wanted to share it with you guys. Chelsea won the Europa League last season, which actually doesn't bring that much money at all. It brings qualification into the Champions League which is more probably worth more monetary value than the trophy itself it comes with a trophy which is nice everyone likes trophies but it only generates 23 million pounds in revenue put that up against Chelsea's qualification out of the group stage of the Champions League this season they earned 60 million just for that you can see how different the money is already. When Maurizio Sarri finished third in the Premier League last season, Chelsea generated £143 million. Pounds. And with the sales of both Ed Nazar and Alvaro Morata, they brought fees that could rise up to £188 million. Pounds. That's sort of including the inflation fee of Hazard's uh, transfer deal. £188 million. So already we're talking about hundreds of millions, and this isn't taking into account Chelsea's general marketing revenue that they have as a business, which would be a lot of money. I think Nike deal alone is like 60 million a year or something, or maybe even more. Plus, there's other sponsorships deals, there's their own, you know, general sales of stuff, there's the stadium revenue kit, you know, merchandise. Heck, there's the loan army. Chelsea actually make a lot of money out of their loan army. So I don't have the exact figures of everything, but as you can imagine, all consolidated hundreds and hundreds of millions in the bank. So when they say they're gonna give Frank Lampard a 150 million pound war chest, they probably do that and feel quite comfortable thinking, well, it's always a risk because it's an astronomical amount of money, but Chelsea have money to burn. So speaking of money to burn and elite players, a lot of Chelsea fans, well, indeed football fans around world football, would have watched that game between Dortmund and RB Leipzig last night and thought, wow, 
Timo Werner and Jaden Sancho are different gravy, mate. Also, Julian Brandt was amazing. Hakimi, superb. A bunch of players. But Timo Werner got his two goals, granted from goalkeeping mistakes, but he's a lethal marksman and always looks like he's ready to score. He had an amazing glancing header saved as well. He just looks an absolute elite centre forward. Jaden Sancho, of course, with the goal and the assist. His numbers this season are absolutely immaculate, looking flames down the wing. But will either of these players go anywhere in January? No. I'll tell you why. They're both now in title challenges in their respective teams. They're both going for the Bundesliga title, especially because Bayern have fallen off this season. They're both playing attacking, exciting football in their young teams. And of course, they're both still in the Champions League. And also, if you look at their own individual seasons, Timo Werner could win the Golden Boot. He's already got two or three more goal involvements in Robin Lewandowski, and Lewandowski's having an insane season. Jaden Sancho is like the first player to get 10 uh, goals and 10 assists throughout the top five European leagues, and he's cranked both his goal and assists after that last game. So both of them are in like flow state in the Bundesliga, and in their teams in the Champions League. They wouldn't want to upset that. They wouldn't want to leave that in January. And also, there was talk of Jaden Sancho being like unsettled in Dortmund, but he was the way he was cheerleading to the Dortmund fans uh, in that game, and they were all chanting his name after he scored and how immersed he was in the passion. I mean, it's going to be hard to walk away from that anytime, let alone in the mid-season in January when things are going so well. So, you catch my drift. If either of them are to leave, which probably both of them are really in terms of the clubs being interested in making serious money on both of them, it will have to wait till the summer. Well, it's looking incredibly lightly. So, where did that leave Chelsea with an elite January signing? Well, kind of in a difficult place. Chelsea are interested in Wilfred Zaha. They have been for a while. He is a good player, he's not too old, and he's Premier League proven. The only problem is, a lot of Chelsea fans, understandably, think he's overpriced. They wanted 100 million for him last summer, and apparently now they're willing to part uh, with the player for 80 million pounds. Still too much. Apparently they want Olivier Giroud and they would be willing to reduce the price of Wilfred Zaha a little bit but what's Giroud got like six months left in his contract? What's that going to be worth? Like four million? Five million at a push? I don't know man, especially considering his age. So what, you're talking 75 million for Wilfred Zaha? Dude, to be honest, it's still too much. I understand why Crystal Palace would want that amount and would demand that amount because of the revenue they get from staying in the Premier League. But from the buyer's perspective, from Chelsea's perspective, it just doesn't make so much sense. From Giroud's perspective, it makes enough sense. Like, we know he needs to be playing football to carry on leading the line for France in the summer and the Euros. Didier Deschamps, the France coach, wants that to happen, but he wants him to play football. And if he's still playing football in the Premier League, regardless of what team he's playing for, someone like Palace, he won't be relegated. That's probably a good enough level for Giroud. And Giroud will be happy because he won't have to move. Him and his family can stay in London and he'll just be driving to Croydon instead of Cobham or whatever. So he will want it to happen. And obviously he'll get to meet up with Gary Cahill. We'll have to see what happens. I could see it happening to be honest. And although it would be kind of really disappointing, you'd still have that mid-season intrigue of seeing Zaha in a Chelsea shirt and being like, go on then mate, what are you going to do? Especially after he scored that banger against Brighton the other day. Watch this space, I guess. But personally, for me, I'd still like Chelsea to look at these lower priced alternatives just to bolster the squad in January. People like Jeremy Boga for £3.5 million who looks like he's in form and could just be a rotational winger in Pedro spot. Do you know what I mean? Maybe get a few minutes, see what you can do. You could, Chelsea could probably still make a profit on him if they flip him again and not spend 80 million on Zaha. Yeah, anyway, the final story I want to talk about today is Ruben Loftus-Cheek's social media post. Now, that as a story is not something that I'd usually talk about, but I really did find this interesting. Whenever Frank Lampard is questioned of when is Ruben coming back, is he coming back, he's always like, oh, weeks, weeks away, weeks, weeks, months, months. He basically doesn't want anyone to be talking about Ruben Loftus-Cheek. We know we've seen Loftus-Cheek post videos like a few weeks ago of him getting his cast taken off his leg, struggling to leg press 2kg or whatever it was in one leg, which for a big dude like him must have hurt. But on social media, on both his Twitter and Instagram, he released a video of him doing what looked like quite high intense football training. He was running drills at Cobham and he was, you know, scoring goals and doing little one-twos with those uh, backboards, kind of stuff that you see when 
a player is getting more and more and more closer to fitness. I think probably his mobility is completely back and he's feeling pretty good and all his training from here will be endurance and stamina training, which of course is a huge, huge thing for Frank Lampard. He wants that to be right at the top before he considers you. Like he really, really drilled Rudiger before he brought him back into the side. But maybe it is weeks. Maybe, you know, just in the new year, he can be circulated back into the team. And that is absolutely huge for Chelsea. These games against West Ham, maybe not so much Everton because of the Duncan Ferguson effect and how they were winning all 50-50s, but like West Ham, Bournemouth, these recent losses, even way back in these games against Sheffield and stuff where Chelsea were dropping points, he's the kind of player that makes the difference, drives from midfield, plays between the lines and offers the whole team dynamic something completely different and can score, can score all types of goals as a midfielder. He's not just a battering ram, he's really good at combinations with the wingers and the centre forward. I think personally his reintroduction into the Chelsea team would be absolutely massive. So that's a huge positive for Chelsea fans. Right, what do you guys think? Get down in the comments below. Would you be devastated with a Zaha purchase? It does look like Sancho, Werner, the likes of these players are off the menu. So do you think it's worth bringing in a Madger, you know, a Boga and or even a Zaha or perhaps just Ake and maybe someone like Boga? Let me know. Get down in the comments below. I want to hear your thoughts. Remember, if you've liked the video, please do like the video. Do subscribe to Yam Plays. I'm uploading every single day on that channel, whether it be you know football manager 20 or fifa 20 but it's loads of fun and i love getting down in the comments with you guys that's it from me guys you lot enjoy the football and i will see you later you ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck i'ma get it how i'm living i'ma walk the walk outline my lines i rap through thought body bag the verse outlined in chuck in my life seen trouble hustle on the double silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle yo chick like to guzzle bad boy stay in trouble i only love this paper sorry i don't I